Shine On You Crazy Diamond is a popular hit song by the legendary psychedelic rock band of the 70s, Pink Floyd. The song is divided into seven parts, giving the listener over 25 minutes of spatial rock goodness. In context to things that are shiny, we've come to recognize metals and precious stones like diamonds to have these scintillating characteristics. We've also discovered the shiniest organic material, and to everyone's surprise, it's a fruit. The berries of polia condensata are considered to be the shiniest organic substance on the planet. But once we leave the glow of our home world, things blow up out of proportion drastically. The web has recently found a galaxy shinier than the rest, which just might be the shiniest galaxy in the universe. What secrets lie in this distant celestial neighborhood? And why is it shinier than the rest? Let's find out. There's a hidden treasure in the first science-quality image revealed from NASA's newest space telescope, which could contain some of the universe's first stars. The first deep-field image, SMAX 0723 from the James Webb Space Telescope, showed a lot of galaxies. Canadian astronomers have now studied a galaxy that is 9 billion light-years away from the Earth. The galaxy was actually dubbed the Sparkler Galaxy because the small yellow-red dots around it look like sparks. The galaxy is interesting in itself because of its weird shape, but the surrounding objects are especially interesting to scientists because they could be the most distant globular clusters of stars that astronomers have found so far. If you are unaware, globular clusters are groups of old stars that date back to when a galaxy was young. They can contain clues about the early stages of galactic formation, growth, and evolution. Looking at the 12 compact objects surrounding the Sparkler Galaxy, the Canadian NIRISS, or Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, which is a scientific instrument that allows astronomers to study a variety of different types of celestial targets, and help Webb achieve many of its scientific goals, and the Unbiased Cluster Survey, or Canucks team, found that five of them are indeed globular clusters. These could be some of the oldest globular clusters ever seen, perhaps dating back to the early period of star formation in the universe. Karthik G. Iyer, an astronomer at the University of Toronto in Canada and co-lead author of the study that found this shiny celestial province, said, it was really surprising to us that we were able to find such a unique object so early on in the JWST data. According to our analysis, we found that most of these sparkles around the main body of the galaxy are really massive and really old stellar systems. Iyer noted that the JWST image allowed the team to observe the sparkles across a range of wavelengths, meaning that they could model the clusters precisely and thereby understand their physical properties, including their age and the number of stars they contain. Before JWST, it wasn't possible to use globular clusters in distant galaxies to date the first stars in these galaxies. Lamia Mola, co-author of the study and also an astronomer at the University of Toronto said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to age date all of the objects in the universe, the stars, the galaxies, and the globular clusters, because we want to know when is it that stars started to be born. The Milky Way contains approximately 150 globular clusters, but scientists have struggled to determine their ages. MOLA revealed that it is easy to age date most things in our galaxy, but it is hard to do this with very old objects, which look old when you see them up close. It's much easier to date distant clusters like the Sparkler Galaxy, which astronomers see as they were 9 billion years ago, when the cluster was much younger and the universe itself just 4.5 billion years old. MOLA added, Think of globular clusters aging like humans do. Aging globular clusters in the Milky Way is like looking at a picture trying to say if a person is 50 years old or if this person is a 55-year-old. It's easier to tell if somebody is 5 years old or if they're 10 years old. It's even easier to tell if they are a 1-year-old or if they're a 6-year-old. 
Calculating the age of a person is like looking at the image of an infant rather than a middle-aged person because the globular clusters surrounding the sparkler are very young. Using data from the Canadian-made Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or NIRIS, instrument on the JWST, the astronomers confirmed that the clusters are as old as scientists had thought. NIRIS observations showed that there was no sign of oxygen, which is usually found in young clusters that are making stars. The JWST was able to observe the Sparkler Galaxy thanks to the assistance of both the Hubble Space Telescope, which had seen the galaxy before but couldn't see the globular clusters around it, and a natural phenomenon called gravitational lensing. Einstein's theory of general relativity was the first to suggest that gestational lensing could be used for astronomy in 1915. According to general relativity, objects of great mass curve the fabric of space-time. The larger the mass, the greater the dent or curvature it causes, like placing balls of increasing mass on a stretched rubber sheet. In space, this curvature changes the way light travels. When the mass of a foreground lensing object is large, this can make a background object, the source of this light, appear much bigger or appear in multiple places in an image. The Sparkler Galaxy's strange stretched shape and magnified appearance are due to gravitational lensing, and the JWST is able to spot it because of this. The phenomenon also makes the clusters near it look like they are in multiple places in the JWST deep field image. The study of these objects was aided by the magnification and the multiple images created by the lensing, but also helped confirm that these clusters are in the line of view of the JWST. One of the questions left about the Sparkler Galaxy is how much of the foreground lensing object, the SMAX 0723 Galaxy Cluster, is making it look bigger. Karthike Iyer further explains, The magnification of the Sparkler Galaxy and its surroundings is not as well constrained as we'd like. So one of the things we want to do is build a better magnification model so that we can figure out whether it's enlarged by a factor of 10 or by a factor of 100. Comparing the degrees of magnification of the Sparkler Galaxy and its clusters with other more distant galaxies could help determine their properties such as their age and their distance from Earth more precisely. The Canucks team will also use the JWST telescope in October 2022 to study five large clusters of galaxies. They expect to find more systems like those around the Sparkler Galaxy in these clusters. Iyer further explained on this, saying, We hope the knowledge that globular clusters can be observed at from such great distances with the JWST will spur further science and searches for similar objects. The discovery of globular clusters in the first deep field image from JWST is an example of how the telescope is continuing to deliver impressive findings and, in the process, shaping astronomy's future. When the universe was only about 4 billion years old, the sparkler galaxy and its companions are not as close as you might think, but they are still close enough to be seen with the help of the JWST. Lamia Mola said, We are getting data that is deeper than we anticipated, which is quite surprising in the most beautiful way. It's an incredible time for us as young astronomers who are just starting out. People have been waiting for this telescope for so long. We feel incredibly lucky to have this telescope right at the beginning of our careers. As the shiny galaxy is further studied, researchers will, without a doubt, find out more about its origins and surroundings. We might even get an in-depth look at what the galaxy might look like with simulations and other images from the web. We're yet to completely understand what this sparkling galaxy has to offer, but we're certain that we'll get to know more about it sooner rather than later. Till then, the web is scouring every inch of the sky for more incredible images and findings we'll soon get to know of. So, what do you think? Why is the Sparkler Galaxy so bright? What secrets does this shiny galaxy hold? And will we ever be able to travel to this galaxy? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.